Learn about an amazing small business and the folks who helped get it started. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at the Fox 43 studio. We're focused on National Small Business Week and we're visiting with Don Whiteman, a counselor with SCORE's Grand Strand Chapter 381. Good morning, Don. Good morning, Greg. Thanks so much for being with us this My morning. My pleasure to be here. Obviously getting Dick and Ashley in yesterday and you and Chris in today, both days on the SCORE perspective, but all week to think of a, a number of small businesses here on the Strand and in the PD that are coming in to highlight uh, what it's like owning and operating a business. Yes. We have a lot of uh, inquiries from people starting businesses. I bet you and do, particularly in Ori and Georgetown County. Yes. I cover Georgetown County primarily, mm -hmm. and we've had probably since the first of the year about 35 inquiries <laughs> starting a business. And now, when you say an inquiry comes in, does that mean a council will actually be assigned to that inquiry and, and, and actually go out and help out? Yes. We work in teams, mm -hmm. and we vary our teams every two months. Okay. So we'll uh, come in with a uh, inquiry to a team, and we'll contact that person by phone, set up an appointment, and find a place to meet and discuss their opportunities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don, where are you from originally? Cleveland, Ohio, mm. by way of Roxboro, North Carolina, Is by way of right? Cleveland, by way of Pittsburgh, Sanford, North Carolina, and finally the beach. You spent some time in uh, in in the Tar Heel State. What what brought you to Sanford and uh, Roxboro? Well, in Roxboro we had a small division, and I worked there with the Midland Ross Corporation. Mm -hmm. uh, we were primarily uh, advanced products group, new product development. Mm -hmm. uh, after I retired, we moved to Sanford, and in Sanford I got involved with Score. Is that right? Now yeah. Sanford's also the home of the pantry. Yes, it is. Right. Yes, it is. Right. And uh, they had a. Uh, branch operation from Pinehurst chapter in there. Mm -hmm. So I've been involved with SCORE I guess about 10, 11 years. What do you like best to serving as a counselor, Don? I think I like people and I like to listen to their, their opportunities that they present and, uh, and trying to help them uh, and keep them from spending a lot of money uh, and seeing it go up in smoke. Mm -hmm. Some, cons some uh, clients have great ideas, but have no concept of what it takes to start a business. I'm sure. Well, I, I, you know, I feel like I'm like that sometimes, and I'm sure a lot, a lot of uh, owners or business people that my salespeople, both here and in Florence, are calling on. I'm sure at times it's amazing to think how someone actually got in business. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. And, uh, and how they stayed in business. How they stayed in business. Yeah. So when we... we meet somebody for the first time that has an idea we talk to them about you know do they have a mission statement mm -hmm. have they thought about their business uh, have they started to put together a business plan mm -hmm. what are their financial needs going to be because the bank's not going to talk to them unless they have a business plan and a financial plan and a marketing plan put together mm -hmm. so if we can get them started in that direction and stay with them uh, they have a chance then of, of being uh, successful. Mm -hmm. One of the things that was stressed so heavily by uh, Kathy Lowry a couple of months ago when she and Dick and Bob Garoski came in was score is without charge and confidential. And it was so important. I know Dick and I talked about that yesterday. But those aspects of being able to get some counseling, some practical advice in setting up a small business or launching another branch of a small business without charge and confidential, those are huge words for anyone to hear. Yes, they are. And also go along with that, if we're presently counseling someone, say, in the restaurant business, mm -hmm. and we get another inquiry for our group, we'll defer it to somebody else. We will not counsel two people in the same type of business. Uh -huh. So that keeps the confidentiality there. You mean SCORE can still be involved, but it'll be a different counselor? Right. Okay, good. What was your business background? I know you talked a little bit about that uh, uh, in the, on the North Carolina side, but in Cleveland, what your business background and how has it helped you in your work as a SCORE counselor, Don? Well, uh, working at National Castings, I was in the new product uh, group, and we found uh, new businesses and new products. 
So I have an idea of what it takes to start a new product up or a new business. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent 15 years uh, on container handling. Uh, I was with the uh, International uh, Association for Containers Development. I spent uh, 15 years on the Standards Committee. Mm -hmm. uh, so my background is, uh, is pretty varied from manufacturing, engineering, and uh, finally I ended up as Vice President of Sales and Marketing for an electrical group in Pittsburgh of mm. the corporation. Wow. So, uh, yes, it's a broad background, so I can talk to many aspects of, of business. Absolutely, Don. Well, of course, it being National Small Business Week, I want to talk for a couple minutes about what are some of the services that SCORE offers? Well, uh, our counseling service and uh, having a variety of, of members, uh, counselors, uh, we are able to offer uh, anything from uh, uh, business development with uh, a person like myself, accounting help, uh, tax help. Mm -hmm. uh, we have one counselor in, in Georgetown County. We call him a half a counselor because you know, he works part-time with us. Mm -hmm. But he spent 35 years with the IRS. Wow. So he right. can help us in taxes and in, in new, uh, new corporate structures. Absolutely. Now, and, and, and I know we talked about the without charge and, and confidential, but there are some services or programs where there are charges, oftentimes just related to the facility rental or otherwise. Yes, there always could be a small fee involved where we have to uh, uh, rent a facility or uh, we have to bring in someone from the outside. But generally, we can handle it ourselves. We're pretty diverse in our chapter. Absolutely, and of course being associated with the Small Business Administration helps out a heck of a lot as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Don, we've got, we got about five minutes. One of your clients, and it's, it's exciting to be able to call them all these folks clients, Chris Godras, the owner of uh, Eggs Up Grill, will join us in a, in a couple of minutes to talk about his experiences with SCORE. From your perspective, how did you first meet Chris? Well, my wife Fran and I, we visit his restaurant quite often. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, got to know Chris and our Qantas Club meets there uh, every Thursday in a private room that we have and uh, so I got to know Chris through that and was quite surprised when I received a call from Myrtle Beach saying that Chris had applied for uh, a consular mm -hmm. because it was a successful business mm -hmm. and generally I'd say 95 percent of the inquiries we get are somebody that wants to start a business. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well that's exciting, yeah. yeah. And, and so. You quickly moved on that. Yes, we did, and uh, sat down with Chris and to find out uh, what was the what was the needs. Because it was a successful business, ongoing, we didn't need to use the rifle approach, but rather shotgun. We we looked at all aspects of the business, and one of the things he was concerned about was he had brought some people up through the organization, and now they were going to be managers. Mm -hmm. And what does a manager do? And uh, so we talked about working on the business rather than in the business, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, and that made a difference. He's still very hands-on. I mean, he's still yes. very active, right? Yes, sure. But the uh, but the people that he brought along, uh, Frank and Kim, now became managers of the restaurants, mm -hmm. where Chris could look at the overall operation. Mm -hmm. We also developed a focus group, mm. and. Uh, this was successful in the business that I was in. We brought in customers to look at our business. And what we suggested to Chris, and he followed through on it, was to find some good patrons that come to his restaurant, set them up as a focus group, hire a facilitator, give them five or six questions to handle, and to perhaps him to stay out of it, let the facilitator handle it. And then the information he gets back is what the customers really think about your business. Mm. And that was very successful. So that's how a focus group kind of operates. And uh, we used, uh, from a national standpoint, of or my business was, we put this into, into, his, uh, into his business. Um, that's mesmerizing, Don, when you think about that, that aspect and the benefit for a business owner being able to step away from his or her business and to be able to hear what other folks actually objectively feel about it. That's truly instrumental. Well, perception is the real thing, right? Here we are. Listen what the to customer that. really perceives is what the business is really about. Box 43. There we are. <laughs> Thank you, Don. That's a, s a sell for the TV station. How would you describe the process you brought Chris through? What were the main, main areas addressed? 
Well, we looked, we looked at the people aspect of it first, and we looked at uh, the direction that he wanted to go in. He wanted to have these people become managers, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, there's probably 10,000 books on how to be a manager, but the thing you have to be able to do is step away, be able to delegate, be able to watch your people, be able to help them overcome some of the things that you had to overcome when you were in that part of the business. So we took his people through, through those stages. And we also, uh, of course, in, in influenced the focus group there, mm -hmm. which helped him. Well, Don, how did your clients ever step away from you? It seems like they'd constantly be seeking more and more advice. I mean, with instrumental advice like that, how do they ever break away? Well, uh, some of them, most of them don't uh, that are successful. Uh, we keep in touch, and we keep the files open. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they need additional counseling or they have a question, uh, sometimes we're just a phone call away. Mm -hmm. In aspects from your background, you talked about obviously the new product development and being in uh, Had you ever been involved with the restaurant industry or did it matter? No, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Business is a business. Mm -hmm. That may sound strange, but it's true. Whether you're running a TV business or you're running a restaurant, the basic things are there. Mm -hmm. And you have to do the basic things to be successful. Don, if, if, a, if a viewer, obviously the Grand Strand Chapter 3, 381 serves a large area, Florence, uh, Marion, Dillon, Ori, Georgetown, Williamsburg County, a heck of a large area. Did you ever hear a request from folks in the PD area that are seeking, uh, seeking advice on how to move their business along? Uh, I've had a couple of calls, right. yes, but I try to stay just in Georgetown. Your primary focus is Georgetown County, of course. And speaking of Georgetown County, if someone wanted to see you face-to-face, -face, Don, and have an opportunity to get with you. Are there some events at night or in the morning where you're available? Yes, every Thursday at uh, Inlet Square Mall from 5 to 8. Okay. There's counselors there, and we have a table set up, and uh, there's either one or two of us there that they can contact us. They can also contact us through the Myrtle Beach office. Mm -hmm. That's the 843-918-1079 number. Of course, you'll also have a great website. We have a great website, mm -hmm. which is... Uh, uh, www.mbscore.org. Exactly. Yeah. It's exciting to think there's so many opportunities to turn to on the internet to really get a, a lot of opportunity, but being able to come to see you at Inlet Square Mall face to face Thursdays from 5 to 8, what do you enjoy the most about your work as a SCORE counselor, Don? I think working with people and helping people. Yes, I think that's, that's the most fun for me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it also keeps my brain active, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it also helps me to. Uh, Use some of the things that I've, I've learned in the past, some of the pitfalls to keep people from taking the same mistakes. Very definitely. Me. You oftentimes hear it, perception's reality. Well, today, reality's reality. Right here, we're visiting with Don Whiteman in the excitement of recognizing his thrill of hearing people's business opportunities and actually helping them get their business either up, up and running or helping them expand. Don, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. Right. Ab absolutely. Stay tuned to Chris Skodras, Eggs Up Grill, coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome back to Carolina People. This morning, we're at the Fox 43 studio in Myrtle Beach. We're focused on National Small Business Week, which kicked off yesterday, and we're visiting with Chris Skodras, the owner of the Eggs Up Grill. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Greg. It's great to be here. Thanks so much for being with us this morning. It's so exciting to think yesterday, Dick Collett and Ashley Bradley were in, mm -hmm. helping to kick off, of course, SCORE's involvement with small businesses, and of course, uh, Don Whiteman in just a couple of minutes ago, and to think of all the excitement about either seeing a small business grow or helping a small business launch or just talking to a business about the aspects that are so difficult at times of just actually owning and operating a business. It's a mm -hmm. tough thing, isn't it? It's tough. It's a lot of work. It's uh, a lot of people don't realize that, uh, you know, you, you start a business or if you get it going, how much work is involved, how many hours in a day that you got to be there. So it's... It's fun. What, what was it? Now, of course, the great thing that Don explained is he had been a patron of your restaurant there, the one in, uh, near Litchfield, yeah, Litchfield. Or, mm -hmm. you call it, down on the, 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 in the middle of Georgetown County. Between Mer that's between Merle's Inland and Pauley's Island. Mm-hmm. And Litchfield, right? So a great location yep. right across from the uh, health point there, the big uh, Georgetown Memorial Hospital right. gym. It's, 
amazing to think about that aspect of expanding. But, of course, John was talking about having been a patron of your restaurant and, and to see the excitement of your desire both to expand as well as to bring some folks up the management ranks. Mm -hmm. He didn't know that we were expanding at the time because he was a, a customer and uh, they come in uh, every week for that Kiwanis meeting that he was mentioning and mm -hmm. that's how we got to meet and, and uh, find out about each other and that's how we found out about SCORE actually. Now do yeah. you get to uh, socialize a lot with the, I'm sure you're working a lot when you're in, but with, with the patrons who come in, do you get to learn a lot about about them? I do now. Now that um, you know my my kids are in there more working. Uh, my son works uh, in the Litchfield store, and I'm able to step away. And uh, many times I walk through the restaurant, and I'll try to go out there for five minutes to get something, come back, and I'm not back for half an hour because right. I'm just seeing everybody that I've known and that that I work with, and I'm there a lot. It's exciting. There's a, another small business which we were visiting back around Christmas time last year, Villa Romana, a little Italian restaurant in Myrtle Beach between 7th and 8th Avenue South. If you haven't been there, it's a place to check mm -hmm. out. But this, uh, the, the executive chef there, Rinaldo Montrose from Rome, actually is able to get out towards the end of the evening, oftentimes not during the, the throes of, but to see him walking around the restaurant and be able to communicate, I'm sure for mm -hmm. folks who've seen you expand the restaurant and to mm -hmm. see you working in the back a lot but now being able to get out it's probably exciting for mm -hmm. them to mm -hmm. see it is and everybody likes to go into a restaurant and talk to the owner mm -hmm. uh, for, you're almost like a celebrity for, right. for, for whatever reason. I don't know what it is it's just I guess it's the food industry but uh, you know but there's the owner you know, you know say hello and so I spend a lot of time with them uh, yeah. when they go out there it's fun I enjoy but, it that's great Chris where are you from originally uh, Rhode Island, uh, not born there, but uh, was there all my life. Mm -hmm. um, been there uh, until uh, six years ago. We moved down here. My wife's family lives here in in uh, Pauly's Island area. Okay, and six years ago you moved to the area. Mm -hmm. what, what inspired you to open your first Eggs Up Grill, Chris? Well, it was leaving the family business. Uh, we were in the uh, restaurant business all our lives. My grandfather started out back in 1939. He had his own little place. Uh, my dad uh, worked for him and bought his restaurant. And then uh, when we grew up, I was in there all the time as a, as a young fellow. And um, never wanted to do it, didn't like it. Always had to work after school and mm -hmm. always said that when I grew up, I'm not going to do this. But as it turned out, uh, the Lord had different plans for me and said, you're going to be right here. So yes. uh, we ended up... Uh, working for him for about 20 years actually my dad and then I left from there and uh, opened up my own little breakfast place was that also an eggs up grill up there it is and still operating under the name of eggs up grill um, a good friend of mine bought it from us just before we moved out of there mm -hmm. so it's still operating in Cumberland Rhode Island Wow and uh, we were there 10 years uh, very successful it was doing well and it was time to uh, to move on so uh, my wife's family like I said, moved down here over the years, and mm -hmm. she was the only one left, so she wanted to come down. So we thought, let's just open up a little place for just the two of us. Yeah. And um, just make it so we can run it ourselves. But uh, it was it was a different idea once we got here. It just immediately took off. That is fantastic. It's, and, but, of course, the excitement about knowing that you're, you're furthering on a long-time tradition, the Eggs Up Grill mm -hmm. in Rhode Island and take, bringing it down here, and that aspect, of course, about... Your, involved, your wife's involvement in the business, your son, you said, is the cook there in Litchfield, and I think you mm -hmm. said your daughter is helping daughter, out in both Tony. stores. Yep, she works in both stores. How exciting. And goes to school at the same time, so. And she's in school as well. Mm -hmm. Well, she's got that same Scodra's commitment of actually getting in and working after school all the time, it sounds like. Well, I, I don't push that on her. She just works weekends. And, oh, right. And uh, she gets a lot of free time off her social calendars quite large <laughs> <laughs> being the daughter of a celebrity I guess she uh, I guess yeah. she does how exciting how did you select the site for your Litchfield eggs up grill location well uh, I'd, I'd like to say that I scoped it all out and did all my demographics but it was uh, available that's wow. all and we uh, we rode down and looked in the area and uh, that site uh, was the size that we needed and mm -hmm. uh, the parking was uh, plentiful so were you prepared to handle its success yeah, because we opened up with the idea we're just going to open up big enough for what, for what we can handle. So we just had ten tables, my wife and I, uh, a couple of waitresses and one other cook that I was training. 
and it immediately lined up and everybody kept telling you, you got to have more tables, you got to have more tables. So mm -hmm. uh, we waited until we had a better staff to uh, service all those people and got bigger and bigger and bigger in there. And now you can't fit any more tables in there. So mm, That is wonderful. What prompted you to open your second Eggs Up Grill in Surfside? I believe it was the growth. I mean, the people that I had working for me were doing a great job for one. They loved their job and they get... Um, they want to stay with us and the only way to stay with us is if we were to grow some more so we thought about opening up a second location and moving some people over there and it uh, just made sense uh, and has that been tough for you Chris knowing you can't be physically in both stores at the same time but wanting to be around there that must be I it mean, was, must be really difficult that was one of my challenges is to worry about how can I cut myself in half and I knew I couldn't do that I knew that I had to stay with the one store open the other one under the premise that it's going to be a second store, put a manager in there, a good manager in the store to get it up and running. And it would have to develop around that person. It's uh, such a people business that um, although I do go in there, I, um, I, uh, I'm in there once or twice a week and mm -hmm. I keep close contacts with it. And it's doing well, Surfside. Great. We've got about four minutes, Chris. Can you share real quick what's on the menu? Do you have a specialty? Home fries. Home fries. We cut them all by hand, and we cook them by hand, and it's um, that's one of our signature items. That and the corned beef hash. So everybody loves it. It's my own recipe from many years ago. So now is that a heart healthy myself. corned beef hash? <laughs> well, it can be. Uh huh. If you eat just half the amount, it's half the calories. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. What made you decide to contact Score for help? How did you learn about the group? Of course, it being National Small Business Week and being in here with Don this morning, how did you learn about them? Well, we had uh, the two stores, and like I mentioned earlier, I couldn't be in two places at the same time, mm -hmm. and putting a management team in force up there. I have never was a manager myself, so I didn't know how to train a manager. So we needed some uh, organizational skills and how to manage a facility, so um, they came in and um, showed us the uh, and laid out some management meetings that we needed to do, put some agendas in play, and uh, it was it was a big help to us to get organized, and that's what we needed to do. And speaking of organization, Chris, what, what were some of the changes that you think you made as a result of the suggestions that came from the the there was a customer focus group that I think was done. The focus group that was that was fun. Uh, we were able to get some of our loyal customers that come in there for a number of years and get them to ask some questions candidly that you know I wasn't involved with right. uh, to give us some ideas as to what they felt how we could be a better operation. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, one of them was uh, the, the coffee shop that we had at the facility uh, just adjacent to it. They didn't even know it was ours. They didn't know that they could order coffee from there inside the restaurant. So uh, that was one thing that they, they didn't know. Uh, they wanted us to accept credit cards. Uh, we put that into play. Uh, we also opened up the buffet uh, in, in a private room down the hallway that helped a lot. We were able to service like 3,000 people the summertime just in the buffet alone. No way. That helped. 3,000 yeah. people throughout the summer. Throughout the whole summer. Yeah, Golly. extra that uh, of the overflow that we were getting just in the Litchfield store alone. Wow. So that helped. I mean, that was another idea of... How exciting. Being in the restaurant business must be, A, incredibly intense, constantly in the throes of things when the, when the location's open. What's mm -hmm. that like? I mean, you know, obviously yesterday was so exciting hearing Ashley talk about in her small business just the cathartic cleansing aspect of needlepoint. But in your business, entirely different. What's that like in the constant throes of being under pressure? You said packed all the time. It's packed the time. You have to remain calm. You know, my, one of my logos to my manager is calm is cool. You have to stay calm no matter what the circumstance. Uh, people don't like to see you in there running around haphazard and, uh, you know, throwing out orders and whatnot. You have to uh, just remain calm. And that's what we try to do. And mm -hmm. Keep a good attitude at the same time. That's great. Calm is cool. Calm is cool. Calm is cool. Are you happy with the reorganization as it now stands? Very much so. We grew uh, uh, organized-wise uh, with, within the company that to a point where uh, now we're able to expand ourselves even further. We've, we've put together a lot of job descriptions for everything in there. We put together all the training manuals for every every position in there, which led us to consider franchising. So, I mean, that's another avenue that we're going into now is uh, we're working on that uh, 
fervently, as they say, to, to get that off the ground. And we're just about ready. We should be ready in about three months to How exciting. Start. So if someone was to ask you what's up next for Eggs Up Grill, franchising, franchising is Franchising is uh, where we're going. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. So would that be all over the country? We hope so. I'd like to start with just one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and get that up and run it successfully. And uh, I'll be contacting SCORE again just uh, for that aspect. Mm -hmm. like you had a, a young lady here last week, Kathy Lowry. Uh, we've been in contact with her. She's going to come in and give us some consulting in that area. So uh, we're excited about that. Great. That's right. Kathy and, and her husband, I believe, had a franchise business for mm -hmm. a long time. She was in a number of months ago and was a, a memorable event. What do you like best about what you're doing, Chris? Well, uh, I guess the fact of doing what I enjoy doing, for one. I, uh, I, I like getting up early in the morning. I like uh, the customers that we have in there, a good clientele. I've got uh, good, a great staff that works for me. Um, uh, the, the whole aspect of it. it's a community life mm -hmm. sort of atmosphere in there. Everybody knows each other. and uh, It's not like going to work. It's like going to a meeting of friendships mm -hmm. and a lot of people that come in there know each other by their, their by their first names and I enjoy it I really mm -hmm. do as much as I thought I would hate it when I was a child I, uh, I love what we do now I truly do he said he doesn't work he goes to hang out with a community of friends a hard-working guy at times a celebrity in the store you think about that that opportunity to be there and folks know what what they're putting in their mouths is the product of what Chris and his wife and the entire family and the whole family of the Eggs Up Grill are, are getting out. Chris, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thanks. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People coming up next. We want to thank Don Whiteman of SCORE and Chris Skodras of the Eggs Up Grill for working so hard to make National Small Business Week such a great success.